Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another edition of Making Time With. I am your humble barkeep, Carbo. Welcome, welcome back to the bar. Today we have, I'm just going to go out and say it, we have someone famous today. And if you don't know who my, who my guest is right now, you're about to. He is a TikTok sensation. He's an Instagram sensation. He is a doctor. He's a chiropractor living in Australia by way of Minnesota. We're going to get into all that. Please welcome to the bar, pull up a stool, Dr. Cody. Dr. Cody! Yay! <laughs> welcome to the bar. I know it's early there back in, uh, uh, you know, in Australia. So uh, first of all, I appreciate really you getting up and making the time to hang out with all of us. Um, it's truly an honor. I thought we would no. just get right into it. You know, I, I became a huge fan of you. I, I stumbled upon you on Instagram. Uh, we were just, I was looking up ASMR and all of a sudden I see you and I, and I am a huge, I, I would love to get adjusted weekly. So how, yeah, how did, I, I know I should, I have to, how did this, I mean, in your own words, how the heck did you get, how did it become so big? Yeah. And I, I think it was partially, you know, really good timing. I think that that had, probably had a lot to do with it. Um, but also it's it's quality, right? And I think that I was able to capture the genuine aspect of what I do day in, day out. Um, yeah, it's real. It's You can tell that it's not fake. You can just tell that it's just, it's damn good crack is what it really is. It's, it's good. <laughs> it, it, it is. And you know, it's, it is so soothing. It is. And you're, and, and the thing is, is you've sort of, you sort of meshed, you know, obviously, you know, a serious aspect of it, right? People, you are a proponent of people getting adjusted. That's, that's not for show, right? But you've done that with, and you know, you have live Instagram feeds where you'll, you'll get adjusted. Someone will adjust you, you go through it and you sort of blended the two of them to, you can get your crack fix here, but there's, there's like a, there's a knowledge base behind it, of course. And you're teaching people about it. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's ultimately what, I'm using the platform to do is to showcase chiropractic and to show what we do. I used to, at the very beginning of practice, many, 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 many years ago now, uh, you know, people would come in and in Australia, it's not quite as chiropractic isn't quite as mainstream as it is in the U S. So I had to adapt a little bit when I, when I first arrived here, because most people go and see physios, which is fine. There's time and a place for everything. Right. Uh, what I found was that, you know, a lot of them would be like, oh, I don't really like the, the cracking stuff that you guys do, or I don't want you to do it. And I was like, well, what what the hell am I supposed to do? I'm a chiropractor. <laughs> that's what I'm trained to do. Uh, that's how I help you. That's my hands are what's going to heal you. And uh, it was just, it was very interesting. Then, you know, later I started posting these videos. And at first, um, we might get into this in our chat, but um, ultimately, uh, there was someone else that was that was um, recording some of their adjustments, and they had put them out there. And frankly, I was like, "That's probably not the best technique to be showing." And so, ultimately, that person had around ten thousand followers, and I just wanted to beat them. It was a bit of an, a bit of a I just want to win kind of thing. <laughs> Yeah, and the history. I mean, yeah, you you've exploded. I mean, like if people are listening that don't know Dr. Cody, he's on Instagram, he's on TikTok. I think he's got like, and I'm not joking, he's got like two and a half million followers on TikTok, like 200 higher. Yeah. <laughs> what do you have on TikTok? Following? Like, oh, currently it's at 2.9, but I should be flipping over to three million any day. Holy, so you, okay. Well, I, come so from a town of, I come from a town of 350 people. Like, <laughs> how, how do you wrap your head around that 3 million people watch you crack necks and spines? And, and isn't that crazy? It is crazy. It's yeah, crazy. It's, like, I mean, who would have thought? Me, I, I I don't know. Let me ask you this though. Like, is there, do you feel like pressure with that man, like with that many people, like 
I got to make this a good one. I, 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 is there pressure in that? Or is it just like, I'm just doing my job, whatever. Yeah. I don't, I don't really put that pressure on myself because I mean, ultimately, you know, I make sure that every single adjustment that I give my patients is precise. It is clear. It is crisp. There's intent behind it. And it's very specific. And what you don't see on the videos is all the tests that I do beforehand, the entire examination, the consultation. You don't see all that stuff because frankly, that's how I figure out exactly what I need to do. So yeah, but I, I, but I really do ensure that every single adjustment that I show, and listen, not all of them make the cut. Not all of them can be massive, huge cracks. Some people right. that I adjust, they're just, they're just little ones. Or right. other people, I use other techniques. So, and I let my patients know that the ones that are like, oh yeah, record me, record me. And I was like, okay. And if it wasn't just a massive one that I think will make the cut, I'll just, I'll just honestly tell them, I was like, yeah, it's probably not gonna be TikTok worthy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, because there is, right, so people adjust in certain ways. There's some people that you crack, and it's like, I mean, it's big. And there's some that just pop, and yep. it's like, I, I can't put the small one on there. No offense. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, right? It's true. It's true. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I hate to say it, but it's true. Yeah, I mean, I get it. Because you have, and I, I've, I've, like I said, I followed you for a long time, and I've seen almost everything. And there are some people out there. And you use the term pop like you crack like glow sticks. And people really, it does sound Ooh. like a 4th of July for us in the United States, a 4th of July snap of a glow stick. It does. It does. Some people, I mean, just they were born to be cracked. Like it yeah. is amazing. And, and there's some patients that come in and you honestly, you can't crack them enough. They just want more and more and more. And I'm like, that's it. That's all I got today. Like that's, that's what I'm doing. Um, yeah. But then there's there's other ones where their bodies just don't crack quite as quite as loud or as much. And it's right. not to say that that's a bad thing. It's just different. It's the way their body is. And as a practitioner, as a chiropractor, you learn that and you learn each individual one, which is kind of fun to go through that journey and, and explore and to try to really hone in what works best for them. Yeah. And, and, and to be honest, and you said the word journey, you used the J word. So, and that's kind of what this is about. So. No, I sound like, oh geez, I sound like Gen Z. Like what's, what's just happened to me? I'm a, I'm not even a millennial. Like what's, what am I saying? No. Oh geez. No, 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 you did it right. I know. So like, so you're from, so you live in Australia, but like I mentioned in the top of this, yeah. you're by way of Minnesota. So how, t yeah. talk to me about, how you grew up, where you grew up, how you, you know, tell me, talk to me about how you got where you're at physically. Yeah. So I grew up in a very small town in, in rural Southwestern Minnesota called Jeffers, Minnesota, home of the petroglyphs, hey um, which I, which I've actually been to once before in my life on a, on a school field trip. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like literally right down the road from where we live. Um, so yeah, so I grew up there, had a, had a, had a really great upbringing. Um, you know, I grew up on a farm for the for, for part of it. My parents got divorced when I was in year three. And then we moved in town into Jeffers, ooh, the, the, the booming metropolis of Jeffers. Um, but it was, it was great. It was a great place to grow up, a great sense of community. It, it's the type of place where, you know, you ride your bike around as a kid. You know, your parents don't worry about it. They don't worry about anything. And we would go by when we would wave to everyone and we would know everyone's name and we'd know everyone's business. And, <laughs> and, then it, and, and you know, I, my grandparents were living in Jeffers at the time and it, it was really great. You would just go over and see it. Oh, hey, grandma. And then she'd be, and then I'd be like, okay, what do you have to eat? And it was lovely. And, and then, you know, I was quite active in, in school. I was quite... 
I was quite lucky and that school came very easy for me, yeah. you know, but then, you know, I applied myself, you know, I, I was in band, I was in choir, I was in, I, I was in the plays, I was in extracurricular speech, I was in basketball, I was, there was all of these things. And then, you know, the church was a big part of it. So I was quite active with that. You know, I went to the Minnesota Allstate Lutheran Choir and I did, I did all sorts of different things. And I really, and I really had a great opportunity gifted to me because I had such a great community support, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and that was, and it, it, it was great. It was, it was, it was really great. Looking back on it, um, I've been back to Jeffers now a couple times since I've moved to Australia and it still has a bit of that feel because there's still like you drive around and you're like, Oh, who's, you know, who lives there now? Who lives there? My mom will still know exactly who lives everywhere, which is great. Um, and it's still nice to see, um, yeah. you know, maybe when I was a kid, I had a bit of kind of, you know, rose tinted glasses on. And, you know, I thought that it was a little bit grandeur because my world was very small. I mean, it was, that's, that's what it was. Right. Um, and then, yeah, and then, you know, high school all the way through had, again, great teachers. Um, the school is Red Rock Central. Uh, it was fantastic. I had, I had great support all the way through. All my teachers really shaped who I was yeah. uh, or am. And, yeah, and then I just decided, okay, well, I'm going to go to university. What am I going to do? Originally, I was going to go to school to become a pharmacist. So um, I visited Duluth, Minnesota at the University of Minnesota, and I really, really, really just, I found it beautiful. It was, it was great. Even colder than Jeffers, though, unfortunately, is what I found. <laughs> and a lot more snow. <laughs> uh, but it was, it was great. It was really, it was a great experience. And then I, I worked, like, even as a young kid, you know, I was trying to make a dollar. Um, so I helped out at my uncle's grocery store that was in town and then I mowed lawns and then, you know, then when I was in high school, I got my first kind of, we'll call it real job where they took tax out. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that kind of thing. And, um, and I worked at the music mart and, awesome. you know, I, I learned from Martin Meidel and he used to be a band instructor that now opened up this music shop. But my job was to repair and clean musical instruments. So how do you, so then I had him working side by side, teaching me how to do everything. And then he just kind of was like, okay, you know, you go and do it. And he trusted me. And it was, that was actually a really fun experience. I, I, there were a couple of ladies at work and that was a lot of fun. It was just us. And we would, you know, we would get lunch together and we'd do all that kind of fun stuff. And it was, it, again, a great community. There was a yeah. great of community there and I really like it was it was great I wouldn't trade that for the world I mean where was I I was somewhere and I got this little whiff you know like the smell is like the strongest of your senses totally and I got a whiff of I don't even know what it was because I wasn't in a music store clearly but I was somewhere and I got this little whiff and it it took me back to working at the music mart it, the wow. same smell and I was like well clearly you know it's not you know, slide grease or valve oil or, or whatever the smell was at right. the music market. It wasn't that, but it, it smelled like it. And I was like, oh, and I had really great fond memories of it. Um, yeah, so then went to university, worked at, and then I, you know, then I was like, oh, I need a job, right? Because, yeah. you know, at a very young age, my mom, for a while, there was a single working mom. She worked her butt off you know, to put food on the table and make sure we had everything looked after. And, and I'm forever grateful for her. Um, she was, she was the best mom in the world. Yeah. And um, so she instilled in us, you know, you, you work hard. And so then I got a job at a nursing service pharmacy and I was like, right, this is, this is the career path being laid out in front of me. And, you know, I loved it again, great people to work with, but um, I was starting to veer way to more of the, the natural aspect of things. And I was like, Oh, I don't understand why all these people are on so many different medications and some medications are to counteract, you know, the, the side effects from other medications. And I was like, well, why not just try to make them healthier? You know, right. but these are people, listen, these are 80, 90 year olds that probably aren't going to get, you know, too much exercise anymore. But I was like, oh, you know, where the diets aren't great or whatever it is. Right. So I was just like, I don't, I don't think I can do this anymore, but I took the entrance exam to get to, so it's called the PCAT. And so I took the entrance exam and 
without even getting the the actual exam back to say you either passed or you didn't or whatever your marks were, I was like, nah, I can't do this. What am I going to do? And then all of a sudden chiropractic came up and I was like, oh, I've been to a chiropractor before. Oh, yeah, maybe I should just do that. Wow. So I applied for early admission into Northwestern Health Sciences University located just outside Minneapolis. And shit, they accepted. <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, oh, okay, I guess this is what I'm doing. So after three years in Duluth at the University of Minnesota in Duluth, it was great. Um, I moved down to Minneapolis and I started chiropractic school and then fast forward four years um, and then graduation happened. I visited Australia, loved it, had a job, couple job offers waiting for me and I thought, why not? If I hate it, I'll just come back. Wow. And yeah, then, I, fast, I probably fast forwarded the last bit, but <laughs> well, yeah, it just, everything just kind of fell into place. If that, yeah, it just kind of happened. Yeah. And, and it, how, I mean, it's crazy. And now you love it there, right? This is where that's, this is home now, right? I've been, that's I've been here for 12 and a half years. And yeah. yeah, it's, I mean, I hope my mom doesn't see this, but it is my home now. <laughs> oh, no. Mom. Sorry, mom. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's great. It's a, it's a great place. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I can't fault it. This is just, this is just where home is. Um, and through COVID it's made it very challenging. I was supposed to go back to see family about a year ago, but of course those plans got canceled. So hopefully next year um, we'll be able to plan something and, and see them again and hug them in real life. Yeah. I mean, I, it's, I mean, you're on the other side of the world, especially from Minnesota. You're, you're, you're far. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, yeah. it's crazy. And you said a couple of things in that story and isn't it funny how you're right. Set the, your smell is it. You smell something and you're almost like zoomed right back into like where you were and you can like feel and hear and see everything. Isn't that, isn't that insane? Yeah, it, I mean it, it does, right? So I mean, here at my clinic, you can see my uh, you can see part of my clinic in the background. Here it is. Um, and then of course, well, here you guys can see Mosby as well. Hey there, oh, buddy. There he is, you guys. This is world famous Mosby. <laughs> hey, buddy, you want to say hi? Or are you falling asleep? Look at what's him. going on. <laughs> he sleeps most of the day on his bed, but um. He's the man. That's, that's um, but actually I have in my clinic and I'm telling you all my secrets. So whatever chiropractor or health practitioner out there that has their own clinic out there, scent is the strongest of the memories. So you okay. need to make sure that somehow you capture that. So I have a commercial diffuser in my clinic and it pumps out a signature scent. So even sometimes like I'll open up the windows and people will come in and they're like, I could smell the clinic from downstairs <laughs> or, or it's very similar to uh, a, a, a quite popular fragrance. I won't name names. It's similar to it, okay. but uh, so I actually wear the fragrance as well, um, oh, even perfect. though I can't anymore, but other people will be like, Oh, I smelled it the other day and it reminded me of the clinic. So then I booked in and I was like, great money. Well spent. That's the point. <laughs> That's funny. And, and, and that's, and that's funny that you have that smell with that music shop where, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's, and, I'm, and I'm sure, and I don't know what that smell is, but I'm sure it is a very specific, unique smell. Exceptionally. Like it is, you know, like the interesting part was when I, when I, when I worked at the music mart, when I was a kid in the summer, my job, like all the area schools, Okay. They had their own instruments that the kids would rent. And okay. then that's what they would play for band throughout the year. Right. And then, of course, during the summer, they would bring them all in to get cleaned and fixed and whatever else. Right. Let me tell the kids from back home in southwestern Minnesota, you need to clean your damn horns a little bit more often. Um, they were disgusting. And someone had to do that. And it was, it was me. And... Um, let me tell you that that may have contributed to some of the smell. Oh. Uh, I mean, pretty much I had to soak these instruments in like vinegar solution baths. Oh. Like it was that bad. Like, oh. oh, and the stuff that came out of there. Oh, 
I mean, that's what nightmares are made out of. But it was, it was my job. But I, I actually felt really proud after I like really cleaned one. And I was like, there, it's pristine again. I was like, oh, good. Go back to a good home again. Um, but yeah, I just wish that kids would just clean their, their musical instruments a little bit better. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would think that, yes, in a horn and the spit and whatever's in your mouth, and it just sits yep. in there, and then it's months and yep. months and months. Yep, oh. it's disgusting. Oh. Actually, there was one time, this is a really thing, it was a, it was a baritone, so it was like a big, you know, like a small tuba. I don't know, like, it's a baritone. And so it's sitting there, and I pick it out of its case, and I was like, what is that noise? So I'm shaking oh. it, and I can hear something. No. And I was like, what the hell is this? So, I mean, I mean, most instruments are just like big, long tubes of metal, right? So I can hear it in there. And I was like, okay. So I start kind of flipping it around to try to get whatever is out of this. And all of a sudden, out pops a Lego. <laughs> that was probably the oddest thing I ever found in an instrument. It was a freaking it was red and it was one of the four the four ones, four by two. Yeah. It was one of those. And I was like, how did you not know that this was in here? Like, aren't you playing and it's rattling around and going, Oh, I wonder what's in my horn. Let's dump it out. Nope, not this person. I don't I, I don't even remember. Who knows? It was weird and random. And then there were a few times where <laughs> I found like like growing up on a farm as well, and that whole entire area is, is farmland. Um, right. I was doing a similar kind of thing, clean, cleaning it out, and all of a sudden out comes like a bunch of, I don't know, like um, like straw. <laughs> <laughs> you know you grew up on a farm when straw comes out of your, your baritone. Oh. But it was, it was like this, and I was like, I bet you that kid lives on a farm. Yeah, I, that is... <laughs> That is, I guess you don't think of it. I guess, you know, you don't think of like when people, they play instruments, not only is there like bodily fluid in there, but like, I guess things get dropped in there. But yeah, the Lego, like I would think if you move it, like you go, rah, 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 it would yeah. just like rattle. <laughs> well, that that person that was playing the baritone may have been in the percussion section as well. So maybe while they were playing, you know, they were also shaking. So to make it sound like a maraca or something, I, I don't that, know. <laughs> Listen, if they did that, you you should be like in like a like in a band because that's super creative, For sure. right? For I, sure. I, I don't know. I, I, instead of just tapping your hand, you've now shaken the freaking Lego. Yeah, in your shake it as you're playing the horn. Yeah, wowza! Uh, that is I hilarious. Did not think we we're going to be talking about this this morning. Let me tell you, at seven twenty one in the morning, my time. Listen, <laughs> you're at the bar early today. You know what? Give me a mimosa. Let's go. Listen, I'm into that. Matter of fact, I, honestly, I, I've made it like one of my life things. I, I really need to get to Australia and see it. I, I really want to go there. It is a bucket list thing for me. I would love to do it. I mean, I know that it's gorgeous there. You know, it's just what a place. Um, that's if, if anybody watches and, and for people that are listening, if you've watched Dr. Cody's Instagram or TikTok for that matter, for me, and I'm just going to talk personally because I have a podcast, and if you want to have them on your own podcast, that's fine. But I'm going to say what my favorite thing is when I watch them is I love the awkwardness of the hand placement when you <laughs> when you're behind someone and you're going to crack their back. The hand placement is the best. Yeah, yeah it, it is funny, right? And at first, I didn't think it was a thing, right? It's a thing. Like I, I didn't, I didn't think it was a thing. And I just thought it was a weird little fumble thing. But but ultimately, I'm just like, okay, put your hands on top of mine. And then all of a sudden, they kind of look a little bit weird, and then they just kind of grab my thumbs. And it's the, it is a really odd feeling to have someone just grab a hold of your thumbs like joysticks. It's a really, it's a, it's a peculiar feeling. You know, it's different than if they were to like interlace. I've had a few people like interlace their fingers in mine, and I was like, whoa, that's getting bit too far for me um, <laughs> but it is quite funny and there's probably a million memes out there now with people going oh what's going on uh, hold my hands and then they start walking down the street like this i don't know it's it is weird um, it's it's so bizarre funny. but it, it is just like you're you're just asking for this and they and they come up with they grab fingers or thumbs <laughs> they're like yes <laughs> that's funny well well now it's quite interesting 
because now that it's a thing, right? So people watch my videos and then they'll get to the point where I'm about to adjust that area of their spine. And then I go, okay, put your hands on top of mine. And they all go, I've seen this and I've watched this and I'm not gonna fuck it up. So then they go, and nice and slowly, and they just go, did I get it right? <laughs> it's, it's really funny. So everyone's a little bit afraid that they're gonna muck it up, but they actually, some of them that still watch it still do it. Yeah, I was gonna say, and I, I could sit there and I can go, and I'm gonna go see you and I'm gonna get adjusted, and I know how this is supposed to go, and you're just, but I bet once you get there, you're like, all right, how does this, it's different when you're live. Yeah. It's yeah, it's funny. funny. It's great. It, it is hilarious. And I, you know, like I said, you've like sort of like meshed the two, like, cause you just did something yesterday. Like one of those, um, you answered like a just general question, like doesn't cracking your knuckles cause, cause arthritis. And you, you answered that completely clearly. And like, that's just, that's kind of like, cause you do it all. I mean, I do it all the time and it doesn't necessarily cause that it doesn't. Clearly you didn't watch though the video because I said that's not the way you're supposed to do. There you go. Pull the fingers. It's just simple traction is all you need to do. Just pull them. You don't need to smash them. You don't need to do these things. Just just pull the finger. That's all you need to do. <laughs> when you do that. <laughs> well, that was a little dad joke at the end. I got a little bit of grief from people saying, oh, wow, that was a bit of a stretch. But hey, we, we got there. We yeah we did get there and 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 the other thing too is you've done some you've you've adjusted some pretty famous people yourself in that in that office. Yeah, I I don't know. Are there? Yeah, I mean people have been verified and they got four hundred thousand <laughs> followers and like I don't know that's that's social media famous if you ask me. Yeah, I mean, but I mean they're just they're just regular people with spines. As, hey, as long as you have a spine, I'm gonna crack it. Like and it is amazing. So if you're, a, you're a lawyer. I'm sorry. No. I cannot. <laughs> no, you cannot. No, I say that some of my most amazing patients are lawyers and solicitors and barristers and judges. And so you do have a spine. You do have a spine. You're more than welcome. It is amazing, though. Yes. I, you you tend to, and I think. I think it's really interesting how you could put your fingers down someone's spine and run it down there and go, no, that's, there's a problem right there. Put, you know, obviously it's just more than just a push, but it's like breathe in, breathe out. It flattens out and immediately you go, you go much better. You could just feel it, right? You could feel the, where it needs to be adjusted. Yeah. That's my job. <laughs> I mean, just, we, we, we sit here all day and I'll sit there and I'll stretch my thing out and, I'll, and I'm probably a mess. I'm probably a total mess, but people don't realize you should be doing it once a week or so. Yeah. I mean, well, I mean, some people, they see me weekly. Some people see me if they're in a really bad acute stage, right. you know, three to five times a week, maybe six. Um, yeah. But then there's other people that I don't see for, you know, four to six weeks, eight weeks, six months. I just had a patient last night that came in to see me that I haven't seen him in three years. So, so and he, and honestly though, he was like, Hey, I've been feeling really good. I've been, you know, stretching and exercising and doing all those things. And I was like, great. Well, if you feel great, awesome. You know, maybe come and see me a little bit more often than once every three years. <laughs> but Hey, if that works for you, awesome. That's, that's, yeah, that's, and that, and like, I never said everyone's different. You're not going to tell people you need to go in once a week. That's just the, that's the way it goes. I mean, no, not once a week if you don't feel like it, but you should get in to see someone fairly regularly. Yeah. I mean, I'll give you my two cents worth. Yeah, um, right. You know, I'll say, you know, I think that you need to come back in this and I'll spell out a game plan for them. Right. But you know, ultimately it's the patient's decision and I get it. Yeah. Like, but if it, but if it makes you feel good, do it. Yeah. I, I think I have some weird, like, love for that. Like, I love getting in and getting, like, I, the head thing's scary for me. The, this, I mean, I can crack my neck, but not like you do it. Like, I can't do it like that. I can crack don't it, try. though. Please don't try. <laughs> no. No. Huh? I can, um, I can do it though. I can sit here and I can, it's probably, re it's probably ready. I can crack it, but not like, obviously there's a way that you do it where it's way, it's way better. Well, I'm also making a contact on the joint and putting it in a very specific location. So, and, and it's a, a high velocity, low amplitude thrust. So it's a really controlled depth. It's very fast. 
Yeah, don't try to do that on your own. I would be so nervous even if I went to chiropractic school, just to like the very first time you put your hands on someone's neck, right? Because it's your neck, right? So it's not like, you know, does your shoulder hurt? Yeah, but it's all right. Like, this is your neck, right? I would be, I would be, I would be, a, I couldn't, I don't think I can do it. I couldn't do it. I no way. Is, but it, I mean, this is what we had to do as chiropractors. Yeah. You know, you, you build all the way up to it. You learn the anatomy, you learn the physiology, you learn exactly yeah. what happens. You practice the speed, you practice the line of drives, you do all that. And then you finally get to this, yeah. this epitome of this is what's going to happen now. And I adjusted Andrea Molson for the first time, um, who's a colleague of mine. She lives back in the US, um, I think in the Carolina somewhere now. I think they moved from Wisconsin there. And um, you know, when I was adjusting her, it was a, C, a C5 right rotated. And, you know, I got there and, you know, we were overseen by the supervisor and I was like, right, this is what I've palpated. This is what I felt. This is what I, at the time I was like, well, this is what I think is going on. I don't freaking know, but we'll try. And so they're like, okay, yep, do the setup. And I was like, what's your, what's your contact point? And you go through all these different things. I was like, oh, it's, you know, uh, dip joint contact and then you go like this and you're like here's my line of drive and make sure my elbow is in there and my wrist is straight and then we're going to bring it into some flexion and some lateral flexion and then we're going to give a high velocity low amplitude thrust and then here's the line of direction and they were like cody just do it <laughs> I'm nervous like i'm like yeah. what if I, what if i what if i do something bad right and i'm like well this is i've gotten to this point i've trained it's like the Olympics, right? You train, 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 train all for 10 seconds or however long your event lasts, I suppose. Yeah. So I yeah. go like that. I get her head like this and I'm like, yeah, I can feel it lock out. I, I get it. And then I'm like, well, let's just do it. So boom, went like this. It was massive. And I was like, yes, I got so excited. I dropped her head and I'm like, you yeah, did it. And I was so excited. But that's what every chiropractor goes through we all have yeah. a first adjustment and from that point on you just hone your skill yeah because now you've now you've truly felt what it feels like and then you just get your hands on as many spines as possible like even every time i would see some friends or family i'd give them a hug and then i would feel their spine because it's just the more that you touch and feel, the greater that the, you can develop a sense of touch. Yeah. Um, even now, my partner kind of makes fun of me because I'm really super sensitive on my fingers, especially to heat. So I can't touch anything hot. Like it's it's really it becomes it it feels very hot to me. Whereas he just hit, picks it up and goes like this, and he's like, "That's not hot at all, whatever." And I was like, "Oh, but for me, it feels like it's scorching me." So my sense of touch on my fingertips is quite developed and every chiropractor would have this, not just me, I've been in everyone. Wow. I, I, that's interesting. You said heat specifically that you can feel yeah, it, really feel heat for some reason. Wow. I, I guess I, ne I never would have thought of that. I guess I never would have thought that, but why would I? That's crazy that, and the thing is, <laughs> yes, I would think that you hugging people, you're always kind of like sneaking a feel down the spine a little bit. Yeah. And then they're always like, are you feeling my spine? Yes, I, I am. am. I am. I am. This is yes, I, am. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, when you're, when you're a student going through chiropractic school, you know, people are very forgiving. So yeah. they, they will kind of be like, well, he's not quite a full chiropractor yet, but, you know, whatever. He's giving me a free adjustment. I'll take it. Um, and, yeah, I mean, this is you have to practice somewhere. And luckily – most everyone put their hand up to be like, yes, you can adjust me. Thank you. Yes, you can practice on me. And that really was a great opportunity again for me. And again, your closest friends and family will be always more than willing to help you to learn more. So, um, and that's probably one of the reasons why, you know, I've had the success and everything is because again, even even when going through chiropractic school, you've got this great community of people around you that are supporting you. Yeah. And that's really important. That's important with any, with any person. Yeah. I, have you ever, you ever had someone in the office where you just, you, 
you just can't crack it. You just can't pop. You can't fully <laughs> like rotate them or her. You just can't. You know yeah, it's it there. Happened. I mean, does that happen? Yeah, it's happened. Luckily, there's more than one way to skin a cat. That's so, you know, then there's different techniques that I bring into it. Or, you know, like one of my patients, I see her weekly and I have for almost the entire time that I've been in Australia. So she's been one of my longest running patients. Wow. Comes in every Friday with her partner and they're like my surrogate parents here in Sydney. They are lovely. But in the first couple years of seeing her, her mid back was like bricks. It would not budge. It would not move. And I had to use other techniques, but I kept at it. Like I was adamant and I was like, someday we will get this to crack and open up and move better. But we have to go through years and years and years and years and years and years and years of this compression that's taking place in your spine. I have to keep trying to get that to move. Yeah. It's no different than if you put braces on your teeth. You know, it's not like you put braces on your teeth, tighten them up once and all of a sudden, whoop, perfect yeah. smile. It takes time. It takes sometimes years. Yeah. And it's little adjustments each time before all of a sudden you're like, ah, oh, we're finally there. Yeah. And the same way goes with your spine. You've got these little dentate ligaments that keep kind of holding everything together and you have to kind of keep shifting and adjusting those. Then, I mean, but now when I see her, Oh, the first time that her mid back just went, it was like fireworks. It had never moved like that before. And it was so good. It was so good. Yeah. So part of that, I, I imagine part of that's got to be not only finally it happened, but it, it, it's, it's a, it's a nod to your sort of determination to get that done for that many years. Right. Yeah. I mean, and also on, on, on the patient's, point of view as well is, you know, they stuck with it because they're like, okay, yep, I know that this isn't going to be an arduous journey, but I use the freaking journey again. I use the J word, um, an arduous journey, whatever, we'll call it a journey. And, um, and that's just the way it was. They stuck with it and they, and they realized the benefit of sticking with it, you know, and sometimes it is a long-term thing to watch out for. And sometimes it's a short fix. Uh, but again, time and a place for everything. And, you know, healthcare is different for every single person. I'm, I'm, and I'm wondering how, how, how important is stretching? When someone's like, do I need to stretch every day? Do I, how important is yeah. that for you and your profession? Well, keep in mind that stretching is just going through a range of motion. Yeah. So you're moving your body. Yeah. That's all it is. That's 90, I mean, 90% of what walks through my door is directly contributed to a lack of movement. So if you can move your body more, then you should do that's that. That's it. Uh, bloody Mosby wants to go out. So let's let him out here quickly. Sorry. Do it. No, you're good. Hey, okay. when you gotta go. He's been, ex he's been expelled. <laughs> oh, someone else wants to come into the clinic that he needed to go say hello to. So we need to wrap this we up fairly soon then. Yeah, so we call, I don't know, we're still good. We call Mosby the, the VP of customer relations here at Combined Clinics Australia. And that's, he does his job very well. <laughs> and, and, what a, and what a cute guy. I mean, come on. I mean, how you gonna, how you not love him? Yeah, yeah it's good. He's, he's really, like I said, most of the time he just lies down in his bed and sleeps. But he does come out. And, he, and how great is it to just, you look every, like, do you have a dog or yeah, have too. had a Yep. Okay, there you go. So if you've been away, even yep. if it's for five minutes, and then you turn around and then they're there, they're just so elated to see you. They don't even care. They're just like, oh yeah, I know you. They're so happy. Right. Every patient that walks to the doors gets that exact same reaction every freaking time from Mosby. He just loves it. Yeah. Well, and I like, and how I bet you it's sort of a comfort thing for your patients to come in and they recognize the dog recognizes them. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. I mean, there are a couple patients that are quite afraid of dogs. So uh -huh. what we do is I just put them into another office and I just close the door during the duration of their time here. And then when they leave, I just let them back out. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's funny. That's, it's interesting. And I think it's, there's like a, there's like a soothing part of it where you, there's like, you know, it's, he's a nice, he's a calm, I know he's a big dog, but he's calm. It's sort of a oh. soothing thing in the corner. You know what I mean? I, I don't know. I would like it. I, 
but I got two big dogs too. So, you know, it, it's, it's a cool thing. I mean, honestly, and for people that, for people that haven't followed Dr. Cody, I don't know how you haven't followed him yet. Like I said, he's on TikTok and he's on, and he's on Instagram and he does, he does a bunch of feeds and he does a bunch of live stuff. And he did one yesterday where actually you got adjusted by your part, your part, is it your partner there? Yeah, so Dr. Kelsey is yes. another chiropractor here. So yeah. Um, yeah, we just trade like every week we trade adjustments, um, and then yeah, yesterday I just felt like showing everyone. So I was yeah. like, oh, just so we just jumped on live, and then everyone could see it. Yeah, and that was sort of an on-the-fly thing, which is kind of cool. It's just like you know, it's not necessarily always planned. It's just like a you know, maybe you were looking to get adjusted, and she was ready to do it. And I think it's really cool because you get as you're doing it, you're sort of talking through it and what she's going mm -hmm. to be doing to you. So if people are going in, I'm sure someone's out there going, "I've always wanted to do this. I don't have the guts. I don't have the balls to go in there and do it." They should. It, it's they, sh they they really should give it a shot. It's it's really good for you too. For sure. Absolutely. And, you know, there are people that are hesitant about doing it and you know, it's not so bad. Like I had a new patient just the other day and she was all like, oh, I'm a little bit nervous. And I was like, well, tell me what you're nervous about. Right. And she was like, well, I don't know, just like the whole thing. And I was like, well, have you seen my videos? And she's like, well, yeah, I've watched all of them. And I was like, well, you can see the reactions. So, you know, it's not painful. This is, and I, and I just kind of laid out exactly what I was going to do, right. you know, made sure that I was like, okay, are you uncomfortable in this position? Is this okay? You know, and then she's like, okay, yep, yep, I'm all good. And then, so I gave the first adjustment and then I was like, well, there you go. How did you go? And she goes, oh, that wasn't so bad. <laughs> there you go. So you just, have, you just have to try it, right? Yeah. You just got to give it a shot. It is, it is nerve wracking the yeah. first time you get, you know, your back pop oh, sure. and your neck. It's it, it's it's an awkward. I don't know how to explain it. You ask, in fact, you ask someone. You just posted a video too. You just asked one yeah. of your, I think, one of your regulars, "What is that yeah. like?" And he gave a very interesting answer. Oh, I was not expecting the answer no. at all. Um, and I was like, okay, well, Josh is a little bit random anyway on the best of days, but it was such a great. It was actually such a great analogy, and I was like, was. I've never ever thought about it that way, and I was like, yeah, cool. Yeah, how how great to think of it as you know it's your favorite food. You have any that first bite, it's like oh that's good. Yeah. And I was like oh, I mean if someone would have asked me that, I would have been like, well you know you can feel a little bit of pressure, but it's a very quick motion. You don't really feel anything after that. You just hear it, and you know then all of a sudden you kind of move it around a little bit, and then you feel quite light. A lot of people say after their adjustments, because I usually have them walk directly after I adjust them because I want to see that what I've done has settled in. So I have them walk over to this beautiful piece of artwork that I have. It's a saddle. So I have them walk over to the saddle and back and then they all kind of come back and I'm like, well, how do you feel? And a lot of times they say they feel very light. Light is the most common sensation that people say. Huh. That's, that's well, because you've now just aligned everything. So now everything is where it's yeah. supposed to be. Right. People sit and yeah. sleep in weird positions and they, you, you're just, sure. you're just jacked up. So you've now aligned them to exactly where it's supposed to be. And then I guess I would make sense. Things are completely fluid and they're straight and they feel yeah. light for lack of a better description. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's great. Um, yeah, I had a, I had a, um, let's see how old he was probably around 10 years old, I suppose. And he came in with his family. I adjusted the whole family. They left. All good. I saw them, you know, about a month later or whatever it was. And his mom goes, oh, it was so funny. When he left last time, he apparently walked out of the front door of the building and goes, mom, I feel like my head's a balloon. <laughs> <laughs> and I was well, like, that's funny. Right. And that was his way of describing nope. that just this, this really light feeling, this very kind of floating feeling. And that's, that's great. Yeah. And that's exactly, well, and that's sort of the point. And it's funny to listen to someone that age do it, because if you ask a 45 year old, they ask, they answer somehow differently. But when you ask a 10 year old, it's, it's, it's obviously, yeah. they have a much different sense of reality and how they should be feeling. And that's, that's funny that they use that their, they, their head feels like a balloon. That's pretty funny. I mean, I, I get it though. I get it. Yeah, it makes sense. It totally makes sense. And sometimes like that kind of an explanation is really the best way to describe it. Uh, it doesn't matter, you know, that he's 10 years old, right? No. Um, it, actually, it actually makes sense. And everyone, everyone can go, 
oh yeah <laughs> like, oh, I guess it's quiet. Yeah, you feel almost more straight up. I, I, I get it. I get it. We, we, uh, we have this part of the, <clears throat> of the podcast that we always do that. We always ask, I've totally ripped this off. This is not my questionnaire. It's not my questions. There's an old French. There's an old French. Have you ever seen, um, there's a show he's now passed away, but there was a show called inside the actor's studio. And his name is, his name was James Lipton. He's an old, he's an old guy. He had a bunch of these famous Hollywood people on. And at the end of it, he gave these, these guests a questionnaire, which he got from an old French interviewer named Bernard Pivot. But regardless, I'm going to ask you 10 questions, 10 questions. Just, they're very simple. They're short. I'm nervous. No, I'm nervous. no, no, no. <laughs> you're, you're the, no, you're at the bar. You can't be nervous. So okay. it's 10 questions, whatever you, this is, this is going to, this is going to create something. So let's, your first question is what's your favorite word? Oh, geez. Um, It's good, right? Like, is yeah. it a word that I use? Is it a word that I use often? Is it a word? Just your favorite. Um, you stump me on the probably the easiest <laughs> one possible. Um, okay, so this is actually technically two words, but it's one thing. Okay. And it's one of my favorite cells in the body. Okay. Pacinian corpuscle. <laughs> That's the first time. It kind of sounds like a Harry Potter spell. Pacinian corpuscle. Yeah, um, it sounds like, but, yeah. But Pacinian corpuscle. Great, great, great term. Okay. With that being said, what's your least favorite word? Uh, what's least favorite? Least. Fine. Yeah, that is sort of annoying when people do that, isn't it? When they go, oh, fine. Oh, where are you going? I'm fine. I've used it. I use it all the time. Like, but after I say it, it's just because I'm covering up how I actually feel. And so I'm just like, I'm fine. And it it also irks me the other way. Am I a hypocrite? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Or yeah. Or like, or like, sure. Like I get that a lot too. Like, yeah, you want to go to the store? Sure. Dude, yes or no? Do you want to go to the store? <laughs> Just tell me, tell me what it is. Just tell me. Okay. So what, what, what turns you on, whether it's creatively, spiritually, emotionally, what, what turns you on? Yeah. Good one. It's what re like really gets me excited yep. is when you've got multiple people all kind of working on something and you get kind of like this aha moment where where you're really going, yes, we're gaining speed, we're creating something together, we're having a great dynamic, we're bouncing ideas off of each other, and it just it just kind of snowballs, and you at the end, you know, can create something pretty amazing. And I, and I've always loved that. Um, you know, sometimes people get stuck in your own head, and you're like, nope, this is the way I want it to be. And then, you know, you're not looking at other perspectives and right. sometimes having other creatives or, or other people thinking about it, or even just talking through things like this, you know, all of a sudden it's like, ah, oh, I didn't think about that, but that's, that's great too. And you just kind of, it keeps evolving yeah. and that's, that's really fun. I enjoy, like even I've been on a few discussion panels yep. and I must admit, I prefer that to and interviewing kind of things like this i prefer that rather to me just standing there up with a lectern going with a powerpoint going okay here let me talk about this i actually prefer more of dialogue based kind of stuff so it's that point of beginning momentum really is kind of what yeah you know, it's like oh where's this gonna go oh this will be fun so <clears throat> opposite of that what what turns you off uh when just negativity like when you're constantly a debbie downer when everything's always oh no that's dumb oh that's stupid oh i wouldn't do it that way oh that's and then it's like okay we'll come up with a better solution then like you have an opinion that's fine i'm i'm fine having hearing opinions but back it up with something that yeah, that I, I I would agree with you there too because if it's like yeah, if you're gonna if you're gonna if you're gonna crap on the idea, at least have a better one or some other suggestion. Don't just say yeah. it's a bad idea and walk away. Yeah, like that's 
That's shit. <laughs> so that's, that's funny. That's shitty. It's funny. It's oh. shitty. You so it's funny you just said that because the very next question is, what is your favorite curse word? Do you really want to know? Yeah, I want to know. Fuck. Fuck. It's, a fuck. it's a great word. <laughs> you can use it in so many different contexts. You know what? I do this with everybody, with all, all my guests, and 90% of people say the F word because it's so yeah. versatile. It is. It is. And in Australia, I think we even use it a bit more in different ways. I, we also use the C-bomb in another way. Um, and that's, that's quite a word. Um, but it's, it's how you use it. It's how you're phrasing yeah. it. Right. And it can be very, it can be like if you're saying that some, to someone in a derogatory manner, oh, that is as low as you can go. Yeah. But it can also be the highest. It can be the, the highest praise that you can give someone. But I prefer, fuck is a good one. Yeah, the F word is, the F word is a good it's one. It's a verb, it's an adjective, it's an adverb. Oh, it's, it's a noun, it's everything. You can use it. You can use the F word seven times in the same sentence, and you know, I know exactly what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, this is this is going to be a, a, probably a pretty easy one for you. And I think I probably know the answer anyway. But what sound or noise do you love? What was that? Sorry, a motorcycle just went by. But is it a sound that I love? Yeah. What sound or noise do you love? Oh, crack, I, cracking I, a spine. Yeah, oh, I, I, all day, every day. Um, I must admit as well. Kind of like, and I've seen some videos like this before in ASMR, when they take like a wrapper of like a potato chip bag or something, but kind of just slowly like crunch, like crunch it up a little bit. Softly. It's got to be softly. It can't be loud. It's just a little bit of like crinkle. I, I have not, I got to Now I got to Now I want to see what that, I've never had. I've never heard of that. Like softly like that. Like a, I hear like a crack, like you crinkle it up. But Yeah. Like. Oh, here, got, I've got some. Here we go. Well, I don't have a potato chip bag, but yeah. I've got like this is the face paper that's on the clinic table. Yeah, yeah. I don't even know where the microphone is on here, but can you hear that? Yeah, it's very soft. It's got to be soft. I don't like loud noises. Yeah, it's just got to be. It's just got to be nice and soft. So, the opposite. Then again, what sound or noise do you hate? Okay, this is only because I live in a city now. Oh no. And they always do it freaking early, which really annoys me. Okay. Is when the garbage truck comes, or the recycling truck, I should say. Okay. And we live right next to a pub, or right, right across the street from a pub. Okay. And of course, they've got the big wheelie bins, and they're filled with bottles, glass bottles in particular. And so they've got the thing where, you, you know, the garbage trucks, you hook it, you hook the wheelie bin on the end of it, and then it just flings it over like this. It is the loudest crash of breaking glass ever at 5.30 a.m. Oh, nice. That is my least favorite noise. <laughs> that, is, that is very specific, but agreed. Uh, the, the, the recycling always... It's always like something bad's happening while it's yeah, while you're like, going on. Oh, and then again, it might just be the harshness of it. Yeah, I'm like, I oh, hear you. you. Just like maybe put some kind of like a little damper or yeah. just do it a little bit slower so they all kind of slide in. Like maybe just put them on a conveyor belt in there. But no, no, they just. Whoop. <laughs> I guess they're in a hurry. I got to go. I got to dump it. They all worked up. <laughs> <laughs> See, and you got a whole you got a whole day ahead of you too. So I, I apologize luckily, for that. Luckily, it's a half day today. Oh, good. So good for yeah, you. We're, we're good. It's Thursday, so we're good. Three more. What profession other than yours would you like to attempt? Ooh, attempt. I always thought now now that I've like circling back, um, I always thought it would have been kind of fun and challenging to become a lawyer. Okay. Um, and I think partially it's kind of like the, I'm going to prove my point kind of thing. Um, I would have in, maybe enjoyed that, but then there's just so much paperwork. Like there's so much typing and reading and it's just nonstop. And, um, I like things that are a little bit more probably physical. The other thing that actually, before I was going to then go to school to become a pharmacist, um, 
then a chiropractor. But before that, my second option was I was going to become a director. So like as in a band, an orchestra. Oh. Um, I wanted to be the director up there. Um, that was my second option. Very interesting. What profession would you not like to do? Well, the bloody garbage man. Like. <laughs> <laughs> you recycle man. Actually, there's some things that I must admit that I would be terrible at. And like, I love kids and, yeah. and even babies. And I just love that all of them are not mine. <laughs> so anything having to do with like screaming, crying babies Day would care. drive me not Yeah, daycare center. And it would be messy and smelly. And oh, it would be my my idea of a nightmare. Like I've got I've got patients that come in here that are that are in childcare, and they're like, oh, Susie did this. Oh, little and Danny did that. And I was like, I really don't care. Like uh, that would annoy me. Um, well, there so you yeah, go. as Who long as as long as there's someone else's kids and I don't have to deal with them 24 hours a day, so you're hey, fine. they're grown. That's yeah, fine. fine. The last question. <laughs> is the good one. If heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? This is an emotional one for some people too. And not for me. Like it doesn't really pull up my heart. Um, <laughs> uh oh. So if I was arriving at the pearly gates yeah. and God was standing there and I arrived and I was like, ah, oh, I didn't think I'd make it. <laughs> <laughs> that would be my reaction. That's it. You, but you made it. You saw him. You're there. That's, that, that's, that's, like, that, wow. that's gotta be one of the most honest yeah. answers for sure. That, that that's, yeah. that's hilarious. I've I probably made. done enough things in my day to probably warrant. Well, we all have purgatory or something for at least a little while. Um, you better have a lot of forgiveness. I mean, he's got it, right? Uh, I hope. <laughs> yeah, I hope, I hope so too. Um, yeah. I know you have patients coming in. I, I Honestly, this has been a, a, a thrill for me. You made it through the 10 questions. We heard about everything. It was fantastic. Uh, I, I would love to do this again for a part two at some point. I would love to do it. For sure. Always. I love this. This is great. Thank you. No, this is, listen, we're, we just sit and talk. There's always something to talk about. People that haven't paid attention, like I said, Instagram, he's on, I, are you on Facebook too? As a public figure on Facebook? No, you don't no. even do it. No. But TikTok, That's, Instagram, those are the big yep. ones. Um, his, this is Dr. Cody. Listen, first of all, I cannot thank you enough for, for coming on the show. Really. It's, it's, it's an honor oh, for me. Um, and we will do part two. Stay tuned. But I want to thank you for coming on, and um, we will we'll talk soon, Dr. Cody. Thank you so much. Thanks, man.